The world's largest cruise ship, the icon of the seas, is just nine days away from carrying nearly 10 thousand people around the Caribbean. It pales in comparison to the iconic Titanic cruise ship. It's probably a good thing. Uh, before it sank in 1912, it measured 883 feet long, but this ship measures close to 1,200 feet. Uh, Chris Van Cleve got exclusive access to this massive ship as it set sail on a test cruise. Uh, Chris, good morning. Looking good, Chris. Good morning, Anne-Marie from the Bahamas. It's a rough assignment, but someone <laughs> had to do it, you know? Uh, there used to be a saying in the travel world that cruising was for the newly wed and nearly dead. That is not the case anymore, particularly as Americans are spending big time on experiences. Royal Caribbean has answered with something truly enormous. It is a destination unto itself that also happens to stop at some pretty cool places along the way. And the response has been enormous. If you want to get on Icon of the Seas, this gigantic ship, you may have to wait until 2026. Welcome aboard the Icon of the Seas, a $2 billion floating resort. At nearly 1,200 feet long, she is the world's largest cruise ship with 20 decks, 2,805 staterooms for up to 7,600 passengers who can enjoy seven pools, including the biggest on any ship, the world's first onboard water park with six water slides, theaters, a casino, and more than 40 places to eat and drink include the crew, and you're at nearly 10,000 people. Over the process of building what we build is the best family vacation in the world, and providing something for everyone, it slowly, through that creative journey, got bigger and bigger. Why is bigger better? It's not about size, it's really about iconic experiences. Jay Schneider is Royal Caribbean's chief innovator. 10,000 people sounds a bit like going on vacation with the entire town. We have purposely designed this ship to give more space for people. We believe even at 7,500 guests, it won't feel to you like your entire hometown has joined the ship. While the average stateroom for a seven-day Caribbean cruise costs about $3,500 for two people, they've had no problem selling this ultimate family townhouse. Three stories with room for eight, the table is a touchscreen loaded with games, and a slide good for kids of any age. And here. It goes for up to $100,000 per trip. The Royal Loft is more for the high roller without kids. Two bedrooms, private hot tub, and a huge balcony can be yours starting at 40 grand. Cruise critic, editor-in-chief, Colleen McDaniel. Bigger is better for a lot of people, right? It means more people can experience something. It means that there's a lot more amenities and activities on board the cruise ship. But it bigger is also better for the cruise lines, right? The more people they can put on a cruise ship. Of course, the better business they do, the more money they make. It took my breath away. When Kevin Curran saw the grandeur of this new enormous ship and that giant dome of windows up front, he knew he had to be on Icon's inaugural cruise from Miami later this month. The Oregon resident has been tracking the ship's construction for a year and a half. The more I watched the videos, the more I understood this was something special. Cruising is surging in popularity. Last year, passenger volume outpaced pre-pandemic numbers, and this year is expected to hit a new high of 36 million, as spending on experiences has climbed 65% since 2019. From the bridge, Captain Hendrick Loy is overseeing what amounts to a three-day test drive to the Bahamas. What do you get out of one of these shakedown cruises? There is still fine-tuning that needs to take place. And we had to test out some of the signature attractions. <laughs> the Crown's Edge has you dangling 154 feet over the ocean. And would it be a vacation without a water slide? <laughs> oh, this is a bad idea. Oh. Now, Anne-Marie, one of the, the big questions people have asked is, well, what about COVID? What are they doing differently? Well, they, they've made a host of uh, health and safety protocol changes coming out of the pandemic, working with health experts. Each of the state rooms has individually filtered air. Um, they, they purposely oversized the medical bay on this ship. It's bigger than, uh, hmm. than anything else in their fleet, uh, even when you look at the proportionally sized uh, medical bay. So they've done a lot there. They also say while this ship is, is definitely bigger, than its older predecessors. It's also greener. It runs on natural gas, it treats its own waste, and it makes its own water. And from the adults-only pool, I can tell you the bar is open. 
<laughs> well, you answered the question that the producers were asking me. Um, <laughs> apparently, we do drink on the job. Um, this is what I wanted to ask you. So you said, you know, cruise ships used to be for the newlywed and, and nearly dead. What I have noticed is since the pandemic, these cruise ships have gotten bigger. These opportunities have become more epic. You already know about that cruise ship that's spending nine months traveling the world and passengers are paying. So if it's not for the newlywed and nearly dead, who are these new cruise ship customers? Well, what the cruise lines have seen is people's interest in experiences in making memories becomes the priority. So this ship, they say, was built with families in mind. In fact, they, they didn't, there's about the same number of staterooms as there were on uh, the, the previous world's biggest Royal Caribbean ship. Um, they made them a little bit bigger to accommodate families because that's the bulk of what they see booking on here. Mm. Um, you know, you have other ships that are tailored to uh, a very high-end experience for, for people who want nothing but luxury. Uh, uh, but what they're finding is that people like the idea of, uh, you know, a, a floating memory maker where you unpack once, you stop at a bunch of places. Uh, when, if you want to eat, there's plenty of food options uh, and, and there's enough to do on this ship to keep a family busy. There's a kids only area uh, down below us here uh, <laughs> that, that, is, that is aimed for kids, uh, you know, up to like five to seven years old. Right. So if you're a family with young kids, you've got a place where you, they can spend all day. Uh, it sounds fantastic. I'm so jelly. Um, Chris, enjoy yourself. You've, you've actually earned it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.